Okay, Dania. Uh, let me fix my screen first. Um, so, Dania, um, I'm going to share my screen in this way. Uh, like a you know, call this portrait. Um, so I'll be focusing more on the terminal at certain points and I will not share the um, documents, the, the course content itself. Um, so the reason for sharing like this mode is then uh, people will have more space in their screen. So more real estate, so they can have the course material um, beside what I'm showing um is that understandable what i said or if, if it's uh, more convenient if i have like a bigger screen please uh, we can discuss that on the hack md and then we can change the mode uh so for this presentation uh, i will um this is a very basic introduction to hpc so if you have already run a job then uh, that's, uh, it, it, it might be like pretty boring for you. Sorry about that. So this is for newcomers. So we're going to record this and have it uh, available for everybody who get new accounts on HPC, for example. So it is this is very basic concept about how do you log in, uh, what a queue manager is, how do you run your first job, how do you transfer your files, uh, that sort of thing. Um, today in the morning, I will, um, Give you some motivation so if you have already applied and got a hpc account you're already motivated enough but just in case um if if you are still thinking why hpc is needed uh, some motivation um and then um how you the, the there's some uh, there's a slight paradigm shift uh, when it comes to users when they work work in uh, remote computers uh, compared to running a job on the laptop, for example. So we, we, we discussed that a little bit. And the scheduler, uh, one of the most important parts of the HPC system. Uh, and software, like sometimes you log in and you don't find your software that you're looking for, then how, 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 you, how to find. Uh, then transferring files. And then uh, running parallel jobs. So this is a little advanced, so I will not go into the details of that, but I will show you, uh, I'll give you some basic uh, understanding of um, how that is done and uh, uh, using uh, resources effectively uh, at the end um, um, our, uh, my colleague Radwan would uh, do a um, more detailed lesson on that so he will come and introduce what he's going to talk uh, later on um, so my focus would be uh, on this uh, common HPC uh, um, carpentry material that is sort of a generalized version of it and I will focus on Saga uh, HPC system. Um, so every time uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce you and I'm going to show you a link on our documentation page where you can learn more. Right? So the introduction is here and more information uh, as a link. Uh, so I would like to ask for my uh, colleagues, uh, uh, is uh, Ula Vidar here? Um, yes, I am here. Yes, can you hear me well, Ulavidar? I can hear you very good. Yes, uh, how does the plan uh, sound? Uh, the, good plan? The plan sounds very good. I mean, uh, I will cover some of the parallel stuff and the other one will also go into detail with the parallel. So for those of you who feel it's uh, easy, this one, then you will have more, more to, to think about in the future, tomorrow and the day after. Yes, so it's, it's just uh, to take everybody to the slam uh, platform. So the setup, uh, I'm assuming that you have already uh, gone through the setup. Um, and uh, I'll be focusing more on the terminal. So I'll use my terminal to log in. Uh, then, but I also um, uh, will see that there was this um, survey going on. How does that survey look like on the HackMD? How many people are using, for example, Windows? Let me try to uh, find it. Okay. Yeah. So um, let's see. So if you if you um, so I will not focus on a Windows login, for example. But that we could um, um, like um, if you if you face a specific issue related to that, we could uh, 
talk about that in a breakout room. Okay, let's start. Um, <clears throat> so you would do certain things on your laptop uh, or maybe your office desktop uh, or maybe a, a small server that you have access to. But at certain point, you will hit a ta uh, hit a like a ceiling <clears throat> that uh, the machine you are you have access to is um, not enough to do uh, complete uh, the task you need. For example, here this is example ab about some statistic student uh, cross validating a model. Um, this involves running a model one thousand times, uh, one after another. <clears throat> uh he, he could do like one or two and one uh, let's say one of those uh, runs take takes one hour and we are we are thinking about uh, 1000 hours to complete it um but what if we had like 1000 laptops then on one hour the entire thing will finish you know you know it's it's, it's something like that um because time we can't buy you know hardware uh, we can buy so we have Instead of everybody buying their own thing, so we have some centrally set up Endris uh, HPC systems, Saga from um, Betsy. So people can use this computer farm, for example, like a lot of computers working for you at the same time as a single unit. Uh, then there's another example about a genomic researcher who was, um, uh, she was uh, trying to assemble a genome. Um, a small genomes works with the, with the software setup and the, the, the hardware and the resource access they have. But now they are going to get 10 times bigger genomes, maybe deeper sequencing technology that couldn't handle. So they wanted a bigger memory, for example, in this case, uh, which we could also use um, um, the HP systems. Um, then you do some uh, certain modeling, um, uh, certain uh, uh, calculations. Um, then it, if, it, if it increased, um, greatly, like let's say we we call this. Um, um, so Ula, Ula, what was the word? I just forgot the word about about uh, a program that uh, a, a processing that doesn't um, um, let's say um, increase. Um, so, so the resource resource increase is is uh, exponential exponential. That means like uh, if you double it, it becomes. Um, it needs uh, like more than the double the res uh, resource. Do you have a specific word for that? Are you talking about the, the, the P versus NP now? So yeah, exponential yeah. growth. Exponential growth. So then when, when you have like a certain things that, it, so the, yeah, so the word I was uh, looking for was scalable, right? So the, so how, how does it scale? So these sort of things um, might need um, um, uh, HPC system. Uh, so here you, we, you could read through uh, some more details about um, how um, you know how HPC could be useful for you, uh, and this also has some information about uh, certain places that you have already used HPC, but you didn't uh, really sort of um, recognize. For example, if you are using a, a Google Map, for example, and you are searching for a certain uh, path, then that that your query might might have gone through HPC system. Um, HPC system typically involves connecting a very large computer systems. Uh, for example, um, these are in addition to um, a large number, these are tightly connected. Uh, so these are mo more or less in a in a in a same room, and then um, these are very fast connections interconnect um so the so the furthest machines would be sort of limited by the length of the network cable you know uh, so these are in the same room for example and they have access to the same storage so this is some difference between sort of um, um on demand services like clouds you could read more details about it here so i'm not going to uh, go much about uh, talk much about that so, um, um, if you have any further questions or clarifications, please use the HackMD for this. Uh, so the colleagues who are following the, the HackMD, please uh, open the mic and interrupt me if there was something that uh, I had to mention specifically. Um, okay. 
So it, the for next step is there is the login. Uh, but let me uh, motivate a little bit more about what we are going to talk about. Um, yeah. Let me let me find the correct place. Yes. So I guess you will not um, hear the sound, but it's it's very noisy. I can uh, guarantee you because um, I I will not share the sound with you. Um, so this is the sort of things that we are going to talk today. So this is like um, highly, you know, all the computers are connected to each other. They have access to a common storage, and they just look like like pizza boxes. They don't have screens or keyboards or anything. So this is one of our older clusters. So you would connect through your your laptop um, through a through the through the internet or the network using a software called SSH uh, to land on this um, place. Um, okay. Next, uh, so as you saw those um, machines, they don't have screens or keyboards or anything as um, anything that you could directly interact with. Um, so this is why where we need. Uh, let me try to get a larger image of this. Oops. Move the zoom. Right. Okay. So you have a laptop and you have the network or the internet between your the cluster that I showed you and your laptop. So then you need to somehow find a way to connect to this. So for that, we need, need use a program called SSH. So that's a program uh, that will um, connect, uh, make a, establish a connection from your laptop to the cluster. So for this, we, we have like different um, um, like ways of doing that. So Windows users will use a different, uh, for example, you could use uh, programs like Putty. Uh, or Unix users just can, you can use the command SSH. Um, so now we are going to start um, um, a type along session. Um, so I want um, like everybody who has access to a terminal uh, could start their um, terminal and try to log into Saga. So I will also try to log into Saga. I will clear my screen here. It's too many things. Can everybody see my Ula? Can you see my terminal? Well, yeah, it's, it's no problem. It's quite nice. Yes. So I will use the uh, command called hostname, which comes a little bit later on the material uh, to show you that. Um, uh, that I'm, I'm on my laptop. Then what I will do is, I'm going I'm going to start my program SSH, and my username on uh, Saga is um, Sabri, and I'm going to ask Saga Sigma two dot n o. Um, before that, I press enter. Uh, I must uh, warn you that. So I will I will go more more into uh, details. So when you uh, connect to your HPC system, the Saga in this, for example, you will land on a place called login node. So this place is not the place we run jobs. We have to use the, we'll talk about it later more, on compute nodes. But at the moment, some uh, socially less responsible people are actually running certain jobs on the login node, which sort of can prevent us from logging in. So I might uh, have some issues, but if, if that happens, we'll, uh, Use it as a learning experience. Okay, so when I try to log in, if you are doing this for the first time, it will um, it will uh, display a message like this. So this message says that you are going to um, uh, connect to a machine that you have never been never connected before, and 
is this some somewhere uh, somewhere that you want to connect is this some 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 place you want to um, trust so in this case you have this key here um, so you could you had to, you had to press yes in order to go further further or just uh, no to disconnect the way to find out whether this is something that you me meant to be connecting is there on the hackmd so if you go to um, login help on the hackmd you will find a place where they mention the the login process and the keys that you are expected so you could compare with this table to see whether that is a trusted place without um, just blindly accepting it so i'm going to accept that key yes then it will ask for my password which is my password and i land on saga then you would use the name uh, um, command called host name so it will print login one two three or four um, or maybe we have more than that thomas uh, how many login nodes do you have on saga five five yes so you, you might even get uh, five there um is there any specific questions uh that's i, I think it's it's quite um, simple these things so i'm not going to uh, go further into that uh you connect to find out where we are we'll use the name uh, host name to find out and here's uh, more detail about that thing i said before so you when you establish a connection using ssh you land in a place called a login node in uh, saga it's one to five and then from uh, uh yeah we could we could uh, see uh, how many the login nodes are there later on um is, is there so if, if somebody has a link to this how many login nodes can you please place it on the on the hack md so people can find out for this we we use for login in for copying files back and forth for installing software compiling very smaller uh, software which doesn't take much time and to monitor submit and monitor jobs but but the actual performance actual calculation take place in this um compute nodes right um then uh, there's something about your like the home directory so when you go there you will land in a, uh, I will, i'm going to clear the screen so i'll get some more space you will land in a uh, cluster home your username so this home directory is accessible from all the compute nodes and all the login nodes so if you install once it's accessible so you will you can see what's there uh, using the command called ls yes so then uh, uh, sabri i uh, have a question yes, yes. yeah uh, maybe you should uh, you should uh, explain to users why they shouldn't run jobs on a login node or mm -hmm. if they can compile jobs on login nodes maybe you can clarify that if, uh, if it's possible yes so um so this login node is is an entry point to the hpc so if you run jobs like it's like it's like a, it's like a doorway um so if you if you block the doorway then it will difficult to people to go in so the best way is you go through the doorway as quickly as possible and do your things inside the room um anything else that our colleagues would like to emphasize on this on the login node um was it hisham that uh, raised the question or yeah it's me who's asked yeah, question yeah yeah do, do you have it's... do you have any specific things that you want to mention no no it's just it's, it's important for users for the users to understand why they should uh, run jobs and yes. maybe to clarify if uh, they can compile codes on login nodes or they have to do it in uh... correct so what Hisham says is correct so let's say what what are the things that are running at the moment can i ask a quick question yes so you showed um, on your command line here uh when you printed your working directory it showed cluster home and then your yeah uh, mm -hmm. is this on the login node as well 
Yes, very good, good question. It's, it's on all the login nodes, it's the same thing. So it's, we call this a, like a mounted partition. So this, this partition is the same data say everywhere. Okay. Yeah. Um, then uh, we have um, login nodes. So then uh, now I might use, uh, so I, I might have ask some help from our colleagues uh, from Endris that I might use certain commands that uh, might not be in the, in the material. So please include them in the HackMD. Uh, but the first command I'm going to use is S info, but that's there in the training material. This will give you a detail about the nodes we have. Uh, we have normal nodes. We have uh, big mem nodes with uh, la uh, bigger, a uh, larger amount of memory. We have accelerated nodes with GPUs. Uh, and we have some optimist nodes which are for, um, which are normal nodes, but uh, for jobs that are, um that that could be sort of requeued uh, in a sense that uh, that means um uh, you could uh, use these nodes if nobody else um want it urgently uh, we uh, we might come come back to that a uh, little later but this will give you a detail of how much uh, resources we have so i'm going to uh, issue another command which is not in the um sorry which is not, not in the teaching material, which is specific to our cluster, which is free P. And I'm going to use the command head so I will not get a very long uh, output. This will tell you on our cluster, the node, the, the compute named, uh, co uh, compute um, node called C1, which has 40 cores. And, and out of that, none of it is free so this is, a, this is a command like in addition to knowing which nodes are there this command which is specific to our endris clusters tell you how busy they are right uh, then if you want to um, get more details about a specific node let's say uh, you have this s uh, in for the same command uh, again then you can specify a node and uh, C329, for example, and then you could ask how much uh, resources it has, how, how many nodes, how, how many cores, um, how many, um, uh, let's see what is print, then memory. So it will, sorry, so the dash, N was the host, the name of the node, and the course is the the C will print how many cores, and M will print uh, how much memory. But if I do the same thing for a huge mem node, for example, um, big mem node C six five, it will give you give me more memory here. If you can see, it's megabytes. It's large amount of uh, memory, so you could have a understanding of uh, what um what's uh, what sort of capacity it has um so the um, uh processing the in tasks here so the or the um course is very um this is a very relevant figure here when you ask for um when you when you specify the um in slam of uh, slum parameter called in task which will come back uh, in a moment um is there any specific question about um these things the hack md let's see yeah so in the hack md it's all under control but i still encourage okay. to ask more questions on the hack md uh, mm. no question is too simple yes um so working in a cluster we go to the next session um so um, our colleagues, Thomas and Ula Vidar and our other colleagues uh, who are working in also Hisham and everybody with you know that um, one, um, one complaint we always get is the queue. That means um, on laptops, we start the job, right? And it's done. So if you want, uh, if you want uh, jobs to be executed, let's say, um, I want to calculate something. 
you know, execute it and when it's done it's done but as i said before um so this um uh, hpc system you land on a login node where the actual computation would happen um on a on a, on a farm of computers which are behind this login node so now we have a scenario there are many computers and there are many users who want to access them so how would you fairly how would you uh, unbiasedly allow these users to use these things so that is where the queue manager comes in uh, let me try to open this in a new tab okay so this is uh, the queue manager is um, sort of explained using a, a restaurant. Here, the, the blue person here is the queue manager. So you have the compute nodes uh, in our cluster. So we could have idle compute nodes. So the word idle, when it comes, it means that they are waiting for somebody to come and um, uh, perform some jobs. In addition, uh, there was something I show I saw in the uh, in the a uh, sinfo command I, I used earlier, which is under drain, uh, which means like there could be other states that it's not uh, here. So the, here the idle means you can use it, but if it it could be also out of production, like a, like a broken table for example, that also could happen, but that's not described here. Or you could have some reservations, which means that nobody sitting there, but only a very specific person or group or a person um, could go and sit there. So we could have for this course, for example, we have a reservation for the course participants. So they don't have to wait a long time in the queue to do small things. Um, then we have uh, certain busy um, compute nodes. Uh, uh, when, when it is when a user is running a job, we call it it's a it's a busy node. Uh, and even inside uh, compute nodes, you might have free cores, like not all the cores are used. So some of could be idle. Uh, and then you will also see the word um, allocated when we go further, which means that a user is on its way, a uh, uh, rather a job is on its way. So it's not supposed to be used by uh, some, someone else. So we, when we ever, uh, whenever we want to um, do something on the on the on the HP system. We have to negotiate through this broker, the queue manager. So every time you want to execute a job, you package it in a way that it could be uh, executed on its own, and you give this to the queue manager. Then the queue manager will uh, send it for the execution. Then you could ask the queue manager how the status of my job, for example, is it running? Is it failed? Then at the end, you'll get the results. Mm, so we have some um, um, XIC for the um, uh, to understand the queue manager, but I'm not going to go through that because it's not that easy when we are not in a physical uh, uh, classroom. Um, for this, uh, now we have uh, we are going to do some um, um, hands-on uh, things. Um, here, you could. Um, Follow me, like uh, it, it's a it's a type along uh, exercise um, to see how what are the basic things you need to understand about a job. Um, if you need more help while go doing that, you could also request a breakout room. But by default, everybody will be in the same room. Somebody can ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, how, how should people request the breakout room if they want one? So, what should they do? uh they could mention uh, that to on the chat maybe to dania yes uh, break, a... uh, there are uh, four breakout rooms open if, if you want to go to breakout rooms just uh, mention on the uh, chat hmm. okay so i'm on my uh, i'm on uh, saga now i'm going to uh, clear my screen so I'll have some more space and I have created this folder so I could uh, um, show this um, easily for you so I have this um, job 
let's uh, open it up and see how it is. So these things I'm going to type is exactly as in the teaching material. So I will uh, I will try to do it slower. But if if I go faster, please inform that with the Zoom. Uh, there are there are Zoom reactions or on the HackMD maybe if if you can't find those reactions to uh, stop me if if, if something uh, blocks you right. Um, so this is an example job. This is um, a very easy, uh, very very simple job. So on the top line, which says it's a it's a Bash script, uh, the it's, it's written in the Bash language. And it echoes. It's uh, it prints something. Uh, this runs on a, a, a this, um, this script is running on the the text, and the uh, command host name. Um, okay, let me have it in this so you can see it properly. So the host name command is the one we used in the beginning to find out where we are. Uh, for this to run, you could uh, you could run it directly. Now, now, if I run it, it'll uh, not run. It'll say it's not executable. So I'm going to make it executable. Sch mod on Unix systems, you have to explicitly say that um, something uh, is an executable. Then I could, I'm going to do this. So this is something that Hisham mentioned in the beginning. Like we don't run things on the on the lo login node. So if I run this, it'll actually occupy the the login node, which which sort of uh, consume resources. So people logging in would have trouble. But as this is just printing host name, I'm going to, I'm going to run it. So it will run. So there's no queue manager involved. There's no HPs involved. You have the script, it will run. But now let's try to do the same thing through the queue manager. So when I print this, it, it printed the host name of um, our, our login node. So if you remember the command before, as info, I'll get uh, only the first two lines it has to go through one of these c1 20 or whatever that uh, those names so this um, one of these compute nodes um, so in order to do that we need some additional things so we have to mention a command called sbatch sbatch is the is the command we use in order to give our job to the queue manager uh, in addition to that, we have to inform the queue manager. So we have an account that we can um, um, get. Um, um, okay, so let me come to the account a little bit. So this is where you get CPU hours. So whenever you apply for a project, you get certain hours um, to use. So these hours are, um, are, are, are recorded in an account. So if you get like a thousand uh, or 1 million compute hours, those are there. So you, the, the Slurm manager would know that you have enough compute hours to uh, consume in order to run this job. Then you have to uh, mention how much memory you need and how much time this job would take. So Radwan, um, when we mention this time, uh, will you be talking about how, you, how one could ask a reasonable about time in your lecture later on? Can you hear me, Radwan? Yes, I think he will talk about it in the, in the optimization le lecture. So here, uh, I'm going to clear this again, and I'm going to run this uh, again. So this is how you just run it on the compute load. Let's see how to run it on uh, um, using our the, the proper HPC uh, procedure, right? Then you need an account account so let's see uh, before that i'm going to also issue another command which is specific to our systems which is projects this is where it uh, you can find out which accounts you have access to so i'm going to use the uh, course account here 9987 uh, i'm going to omit the k uh, just to show you something uh, and then I'm going to ask one gigabyte of memory, and I'm I'm telling my the queue manager my job would take about a minute. So this is something very tricky. You have to sort of send the tell the queue manager 
my job would take this much of amount of time. If the job takes more than that, your job will be terminated. If your job take less than that, your job will finish and the balance would be reimbursed. Okay, I'm going to run the same job um, that I run here. Uh, I'm going to have a little more space here and open another terminal. Um, let me open it. So I briefly mentioned before that you could ask the queue manager how the status is as well. So here I'm going to enter. So when I enter it, it will fail. But it says is is an invalid account because when you type the account or the this this uh, parameters, you have to type exactly this. That's why I uh, omitted that. To, you know, you, you might uh, you might uh, have some errors, but if you read the error you would know what the thing is. Then you could ask from the queue manager how, how my status is. I'm using the dollar user here. So you could sort of um, do the same thing on your computer without here. Dollar user means my username. So it's running. So queue manager says it's running and now it's finished. So at the end of the job, it would produce a uh, log file. Let's see which log file is created. Um, you will also see a job ID here. So when you start the job, you'll um, get a job ID. So that log file created would have this job ID by default if you don't specify something else. Let's see what's inside that. Inside that you will see that this script was running on C523. That means it's a compute node. This said how much resources were alloc allocated, how much uh, time was spent, and other other details. So if it has failed, it would have mentioned this here as well. So I'll re recommend for those who are not uh, that very new to run this job, uh, and uh, maybe we could collect some information on the HackMD, maybe how it's going. Um, let's see. So Sabri, you don't use the hands up or green uh, buttons to ask how people are doing in, uh, the, in the hands on. Very good uh, point, um, Maiken. Oh yeah, that's that's a good way for us to know. Like, please uh, give a hands up. Um, Maiken, where's this button in the? Uh, it's at the bottom at reactions. Okay. So you could use a thumb up if you're if you're good or. or uh, let's see, there's a raise hand if you need help, for example. Yeah, if you need help, raise hand, then we can uh, send to you and to break out room with a helper. Hmm. Uh, so if, if everybody could give a reaction that they are okay, they already know this, or like they have already done it, we can move forward. So please give that um, sign as indicated by uh, Mikan. So uh, by the way, there is a user is asking where the, the, the file example is located. Aha, uh -huh. very good, um, very good question. One, one way to find out is to copy this. Um, I, I copy pasted this, um, what we have here. Apart from that, on the HackMD, uh, to make things a little easier, let me find HackMD first. I made a repo with every, all the scripts that I'm going to um, use today, and I have them on GitHub. Uh, HPC intro, uh, login help. Examples so used. Put it on the HackMD, so it can be yes. from there. Yeah, so these examples used would go to a, a GitHub page where it's going to give you all the scripts that I'm going to use. Right. Yeah. 
So it's down the HackMD if you don't want to copy paste. Um, I don't see any reactions. Do you see any reactions, um, colleagues? I have some reactions. Uh, okay. Is uh, most talk good? Yeah. Green. Huh. Thumbs up. Okay. Let's check the schedule a little bit uh, just to make sure that I'm uh, <coughs> on time. We'll have a break at 9.55, Sabri. 9.55, yes. Yeah. Yes, it's uh, perfect then. Then um, mm, I'm trying to f find out how the reactions are. Yeah. Uh, can, can I okay. have a question? Uh, could, you, yeah. could you show again how you listed uh, the account names? Because I get mm. an error that uh, uh invalid account or account partition and i typed exactly the same as what you did okay so then you might not have the course access you have to when you type projects you should see that what you're going to use you can use any of the projects that you would uh, you normally have but if you use the course account it's it should be a little faster but it's not going to make a big difference uh yeah uh, yeah, I have to mention this that the waiting list uh, participants who got access later last week may not have access to the course uh, projects. Probably, it, you you were communicated through email that we might not be able to give you access. Okay. Yeah, maybe my uh, yeah Marius is working on that now. Probably okay. you will get later today. Yeah. 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 Those okay. of you that are on the waiting list that uh, has received the information from uh, my colleague Daniel. Uh, we'll get access very soon. I'm working on it right now. So you will receive an email shortly. Yeah. All right, then Then uh, it's basically, it's working as it should, or it's not working as it should. <laughs> okay, thank you <laughs> for now. So, yeah, so so instead of what I used, you could use one of the things you get listed when you type the name uh, command projects. So any of this would work like let's say in, instead of uh, 187 if i type one of the other things i have access to 997 for example it would still work um so then um i will slowly move forward a little bit so if you mean if you remember that i um okay let let me use the correct one Eight, just, um, Sabri, just one question. Uh, the example job dot sh file. Where can we find that? Uh, this example job sh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there are two ways to find it. One is that you create one file uh, by copy pasting what we have here on the material. So what what's what's in that text is here on the. Um, let me find out this one. Another way to get that is so, copying. Uh, sorry, so maybe people didn't find, uh, didn't catch how you got to this GitHub page from the main course page, possibly. Um, from the HackMD examples used. So if you click on the examples used link here, if you go to um okay so that that was my fault actually so that example is not down the sabri um, why don't you take one minute and upload it there and then we solve the issue yeah um it will take 30 seconds just put it put it into the github um yeah so i, I yeah i don't I, i'm on saga now so i don't want to do that but let's 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 make that file right so you can um um okay so github I'm not sure if everybody could uh, download from the GitHub either. Let's see. But uh, Sabri, uh, I mean, we put it on HackMD. So how about you yes. copy paste it from HackMD? And yes. everybody who doesn't have it can do the same thing. Very good, very good. Um, on HackMD, Radwan has pasted it on a somebody, code block. Not me, but somebody, some nice person pasted it here. So OK, it. so you, you copy this one, copy this one. Um, you could use a command uh, editor uh, like um, nano or vim um, so let's let's use nano which is a little bit easier maybe for most people and i'm going to uh, example um, okay
So I have I already have this one. So I'm going to use a different file name one here, but please use uh, the original file name. Or maybe, maybe I could just delete it and come back. So you would open a file. Oops, no, no. And then you could paste what you copied and on nano control o to save and press yes and control x to go out control open the document control o to save control x to go out uh, then you will have the file here like this I'm sorry about that uh, confusion, but I will uh, upload that uh, file soon. I, I didn't upload it because it's, it's uh, probably because it's already there, the content, uh, what I want here. Yes, uh, because of the time constraint, I will move to the next uh, step. Um, and maybe I'll show the interactive job in the next uh, session. I didn't want to. <coughs> Sabri, maybe you can ask every, uh, someone if they are not able to do this. Uh... Give a reaction, a red reaction. Yes, please do that. So if you if you drastically failed to find where the how to create this example file, or like if you have no idea how to open an editor, for example, uh, then please um, give a like a red reaction. Uh, because I'm sharing screen, I don't see the exact menus that you see. Um, yes, yeah, so there's a that, that's a that's actually a thing we should uh, mention at the beginning. So. Um, some basic text editor experience or unix experience we were sort of anticipating but next time we will make sure that we'll give more uh, introduction uh, to that part as well how to open a file and how to edit and that sort of sort uh, before the next two minutes uh, we, before we finish uh, this session um, if you remember that I, I use this uh, as this job cat examples jobs dot com uh, dot sh uh, I I did the uh, I ran a command that um, um, went to the sorry 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 s batch s batch uh, account uh, which was nine nine uh, 87k um, maybe i'll use this uh, the exact terminal so it's, it's easier not confusing so i use this uh, command to run this job so in, instead of specifying this here you could actually specify that inside the jobs as well so this account now if i type it uh, try to run it without the account it will say account not um, uh, valid uh, i will open the command and then after the the initial this we call the shebang line you could mention mention you could inform the queue manager s s batch that is sort of like a keyword starting with the hash use this account then if you do that inside the sorry um uh, in, inside the it's uh, BIM uh, nano yes save the file exit if you do that and if you run it again uh, okay so it's again uh, mentioning something so that there's something wrong with the command I use let's see what's uh, wrong with it is patch nn if see I, I, I again forgot that k Right. So let's try again. Uh, control O, Control X. Let's try again. Now it will run. At the same time, you could also move all these things inside as well. S batch. And is 
batch. So you could have everything inside and you can also give a name for this. Yes, it's batch uh, job name equals test job. So you could have this inside. Let's see, uh, sorry, um, uh, control, control O. Yeah, control O and control X. Let's see the job. So these things I typed would be there in the teaching material as well. Then you would just say S batch, S batch, and it'll run. You don't need to mention anything else. That is how the normal um, um, jobs are uh, described. Um, if I can find the uh, jobs, teaching material, job script, So now in our documentation, um, so I'll place the link here. Tell me more details about what are the specifics about Saga jobs, from jobs, sample scripts, what other things that you could mention? How would you ask for resources? How much memory, uh, the, you know, if you want to do so many things at once, uh, if your job is capable of running in parallel, how you uh, ask for more calls? And all these details are there. So I'll paste this link in the I can be. Um, yeah, can, can one of you place this? I'll place it here on the chat, maybe. Okay, now I think we'll uh, stop there for the break. Um, and after the break, uh, we'll see if everybody is okay with these basic um, jobs and I will uh, during the break I will also upload those example files to um, git, git as well um, and see you I'm going to hand over now to Dania uh, and then we'll meet after the break and uh, Dania please inform when uh, when we start next and yeah. etc. Thank things. you Sabri we will have a 10 minutes break and we will meet eight minutes past 10 so wait break until 10 or 8. 